So in this video here, we're going to take a look at how we can do benchmarking on the new YOLO V10 model. So we're basically going to use the Autolytics package to do the benchmarking on specific hardware. We're going to use the Google Colab notebook for a free GPU. So we can both go in and do benchmarking on the GPU, but also the CPU. It's really important that you do this. You can do this with pre-trained models, but also your own custom trained models. It's really important that you go in and benchmark it before you deploy them on specific hardware to see what are the optimization frameworks should you use before putting them out there. So let's just jump straight into the documentation. If we go inside our models tab, we can go in and see we have the YOLO V10 model. So we can basically just specify it with a single line of code. It's going to download the model automatically in here. You can see all the key features, the model variant that we have as well. We also have videos covering both YOLO V10 and all the other YOLO versions over here to the left. So yeah, let's go inside our modes. We can go in and see, we can do the benchmarking. So we both have train, validation, prediction, export, and so on. And now we're going to use benchmarking where it's basically just going to take the model you specify the data set that you want to benchmark it on and then it's going to export it to all the formats available in your environment that you want to, to run the benchmarking on so just scroll a bit further down here we can then see we can both do it in python and also from the command line interface in one of the previous videos we used the google colab notebook as well with another gpu but if you go inside the runtime, we can change the runtime type. I have a pro version. If you have a free version, you can use the T4 TPU, but I'm going to run it on an A100. So let's now save it here and connect to the runtime. First of all here, we make sure that we have pip installed Autolytics. It's going to install all the packages available if you have the specific hardware and also the frameworks if you can install those on your machine. So you can run this locally. You can run in Google Colab Notebook on any server and so on. Just make sure that you have CUDA if you want to run it on a GPU. So after we're connected to the runtime, we can then run the pip installation of Ultralytics. We're pretty much good to go. We can create a new code snippet and we need to have these explanation marks to run command lines directly in a Google Colab notebook or else it will just run Python code. You can also take the Python code example. It's just two lines of code and it will do the exact same thing. So right now, we, instead of specifying data set here with the Coco 8, you can use whatever data set available, even your own. So let's go ahead and do it on our own data set. I just have a data set on RoboFlow. I hit export, YOLO v9 format. So it's just the Ultralytics YOLO format. Here we get the downloadable code. I copy it and now we're going to paste it. And now we're going to just run it here. And then it's actually like just going to download automatically, extract it in here. And then we're pretty much good to go. So we can see here that the A100 was not available. So it's going to connect me to an L4, but that's also fine. In the other videos, we tested it out on a T4, but also my 4090 in one of the other videos for YOLO V8. So definitely go ahead and check those out. It's really important that we do this benchmarking. So now we can basically just go ahead and see we have this data set. We have a bunch of cars labeled inside our data set. You can use RoboFlow and so on for labeling your data, or we also have other videos how you can set up a whole computer vision pipeline. Definitely check those out. You can take a data set, label it, export into Autolytics format, open source, everything, and you can just use it out of the box. So for labeling, we're using an open source tool. So you can use that on your own as well without making your data set public. So now we can go down to our data YAML file, just making sure that all our data and images are in the correct path. So we have our test, we have our train, and we have our validation. So I'm just going to change this to valid, and we have our train. So now we have the full paths inside our Google Colab notebook in our data YAML file. So now we can copy this path here, scroll a bit further down, and then just throw it in here. There we go. It's going to extract our own data, our custom data, and train it on the YOLO V10 model. So instead of YOLO V8, we just need to specify YOLO V10. Now we can specify if we want to use half precision and also what device. So we're going to use device zero for GPU. This is if you want to use floating point 16 bit, but we're just going to go with the standard model. It will download automatically. Let's now just run it and see if we can get some results. So command is not found. We didn't install Ultralytics. So let's just run that and then we can go down and run the command directly. While it's doing that, let's open up a new terminal. So we can do it on my MacBook as well and benchmark it on CPU. And then we can do the comparison side by side. So first of all, just activate the environment, con the environment. There we go. And we can take the exact same command here. Right now, I just don't have the data set. There we go. And I'll just show you that you can go in and use this on pretty much whatever data set here available. 
for the data set it's more like benchmarking it against different frameworks if it exports it into a specific framework does it drop in the average position and so on so that will be depending on your data set but not the specific hardware so we can perfectly do this here fine so it's going to specify the coco 8 and then it's going to download that automatically so we have our yaml file there we go and now we need to delete our half position and also device because we only have a cpu available we can specify the image size we run it and we don't need the explanation mark there we go so now it's both going to run it on the cpu but also the gpu and we should be good in here now we can run the benchmark command and then we'll just take a few minutes we'll get the results back and then we can take a look at them side by side and see how much are we able to squeeze out of the new yolva 10 model how fast is it compared to the other ones so both of our benchmarks are now done running. We can both see the CPU version and also the GPU version. Just to start with here, we can see the data set. So again, this is on our own custom data set. We can see the mean error positions and so on, which is probably a bit off here. So if you just take a look at the frames per seconds on a GPU, so this is an L4 GPU, 42 frames per seconds with the high torch model. So this is the default model that they're running on with the Autolytics framework. If you just run the predict function and set up directly where it will automatically download the model. If you just convert it to torch script, we get around 200 frames per second or the next 20 frames per second. And then we have Tensor RT. So this is the NVIDIA optimized inference framework basically for running these models. So it's going to take another next model, create an engine file and run it on optimized NVIDIA hardware. Where here we can see we squeeze out over 600 frames per second with the new Yolova 10 model. Just make sure that this is the nano version of it. So it's the smallest one. And I think it's around like five megabytes in size. So we can actually see it here is a PyTorch 5.6 megabytes. We can also see some of the other frameworks here where the models are larger. It doesn't really decrease in performance, so that's good. But we can see here the frame per seconds, it is almost like 12, 14 times faster optimizing it for Tensor RT compared to just using the raw PyTorch model. So this just shows how important it is to go in and do benchmarking both on your data set, but also the specific hardware that you're running it on. So this is really crazy, crazy results. If you take a look at the CPU version, we only have PyTorch, TorScript, ONNX, and OpenVINO, where if you're using ONNX or OpenVINO, we get around like a four X increase in speed, which is also pretty significant. Just out of the box, just by exporting the model using another framework, we get four X inference speed on a CPU. And if you're using a TPU, we get over 10 times as fast processing speed. So again, we can either reduce the, the cost of running inference with our models or basically just run it way faster. If you do comparisons, again, the mean out positions here, they look pretty good. They're decreasing a bit in performance here, but that could just be because we're using the Coco 8 data set as well. So it's a rather small data set, but the frames per seconds here is a pretty nice speed up. So I hope this is useful for you guys out there. You should definitely use it when you train your own custom machine learning models and want to put them into production. This is going to make a huge difference. So thanks a lot for watching. Make sure to check out the other videos here on the channel. And then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy benchmarking.